coup plotting on the sidelines of a Christmas party to an election denier admitting she actually knows nothing about election law. The ex-president's former co-defendants in the Fulton County election interference case are spilling the beans to the prosecutors, providing a plethora of new details about the days and weeks after the 2020 election, when Donald Trump and his allies tried anything and did everything they could to reverse what they knew was Trump's election defeat. Thanks to some incredible new reporting from The Washington Post and ABC News, among others, we're getting a look at what big lie peddlers Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis and coup plot architect Kenneth Chesbro told prosecutors during their proffer sessions. Those are the meetings where defendants who take plea deals reveal any information that could be used against the other defendants in this case as part of those deals, which is the, at this time includes Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, and of course, Donald J. Trump. Former Trump attorney Jenna Ellis describing a chilling conversation with Trump aide Dan Scavino at a White House Christmas party. I said something to him like, I'm sorry that uh, we haven't been able to do more. And I uh, emphasized him, I thought that the, um, the, the claims and the ability to challenge uh, the election results was essentially over because of the dismissal of the Texas versus Pennsylvania case from the United States Supreme Court. And he said um, to me in a kind of excited tone, well, we don't care and we're not going to leave. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, the boss, meaning President Trump and everyone understood the boss. Um, that's what we all called him. Um, he said the boss uh, is not going to leave under any circumstances. We are just going to stay in power. And I said to him, well, it doesn't quite work that way, you realize. And he said, we don't care. We're not going to leave. We're just going to stay in power. That's what Trump said. Team Trump. The statement deals a body blow to the notion that Trump and his innermost circle ever actually believed that the election had been won and then stolen from Trump. For Trump and his allies, it was never about actually finding any voting fraud or voting irregularities in the 2020 election. One of their top lawyers admitting on tape that she's not exactly an expert on elections. Here's Sidney Powell talking to Fulton County prosecutors. Did I know anything about election law? No. But I understand fraud from having been a prosecutor for 10 years. <laughs> it wasn't any of that either. Wow. We're also learning about a December 16th, 2020 Oval Office meeting that ties Donald Trump to a key plank of Fonnie Willis's alleged criminal enterprise. That's the use of the fake slates of electors to disrupt the joint session of Congress on January 6th. It's a meeting that was not detailed in Fonnie Willis's sprawling indictment that listed dozens of, quote, overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. On that, The Washington Post reports this. Chesbro recalled other Trump advisors being in the room including Scavino and Meadows, quote, near the end of the photo op, I had a back and forth with President Trump when the matter of Arizona came up, Chesbro recalled to prosecutors, quote, I briefed him on what my understanding was of what was happening in Arizona. Chesbro told prosecutors that Trump asked four or five questions that he summarized for Trump in his 28, November 18th, 2020 memo to, memo to the campaign in which he called January 6, 2021, the real deadline for settling the state's electoral votes, though it was unclear whether Trump reacted to his analysis. Stunning new details, new evidence still coming in on the Trump coup plot from allies who have flipped on the ex-president. It's where we begin today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Havey, is back with us. Also joining us, the editor-at-large for The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, and national investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Carol Lennig. Um, Tim Havey, I start with you because I'm always looking for the gap between what you knew and the evidence that you were able to develop on the select committee and what is revealed um, through the criminal prosecutions and criminal investigations. So, so your reaction to what you heard um, from Powell and Alice and Chesbro. Yeah, a couple of things significant here, Nicole. One, uh, as you said at the top, there was really never any serious effort to uncover voter fraud or any serious belief in its existence. It sounds very much like this was a political strategy from the beginning. Generate fake electors, go to the state legislators and state officials, the Republican members of Congress. That's the path forward, as Scavino said to Jenna Ellis. 
it doesn't really matter if we keep losing these claims. That is shocking. That's illegal. That, that we, we got toward that, but this is more important direct evidence. The other thing that comes through to me in, in all of these new debriefing tapes that uh, that are coming out is how much engaged the president was himself, right? Like a, a key fact for Jack Smith and for Fonnie Willis will be uh, a proof of a conspiracy and the president's personal involvement, right? He was briefed by Chesbro directly on the fake electors plans. He's talking directly to Sidney Powell about the these theories of election fraud, which are debunked, right? He is not a passive observer being advised by uh, by lawyers. He's engaged himself in discussions and con in controlling and understanding the plot. So those are two very significant things, very relevant in both the Jan 6 case in Washington and the ultimate trial of the RICO case in Georgia. Yeah, I mean, Tim, I'll ask you to put your federal former federal prosecutor hat on for this question. I mean, Trump has been charged with the civil rights era crime of denying the vote, denying people their their actual votes and their right to vote. It seems that knowing there was never any fraud goes a long way toward proving that Trump intended to deny people their votes. Yeah, yes, exactly right. If the, the civil rights charge requires sort of mindful deprivation of a right, the fact that he disregards the the you know, actual evidence of fraud and moves straight to the political coup, those planks in the multi-part prong to disrupt the joint session is very, very telling on his intent. Uh, and the other thing that Powell, I think, indicates very directly is that she was present for repeated explanations to the president that he had lost. Again, you, you know, I go back to Bill Barr's analogy here about the, the clown car. Now, there's there are capable lawyers that have been with the president throughout his time, right? Bill Barr, Pat Cipollone, his campaign lawyers, even on the political side, Bill Stepien. Yet he listens to or or adopts the flawed reasoning of People like the clown car, Sidney Powell, who admits she never had any experience in election law, Jenna Ellis, who's not very far out of law school, also had no experience. Right? These are the people on which he's going to claim to rely when the pros in the room are continually telling him in the presence of the clown car that he'd lost, all really significant evidence of, of his, his understanding and his intent. I will pay money to see the courtroom scene where someone uses that with a straight face. In the presence of the clown car, you said what? Let me let me play some of Sidney Powell's testimony. We have that um, on tape. Ms. Powell, were you ever around when someone, anyone, told uh, Donald Trump that he had lost the election? Oh, yeah. Who? Uh, Pat Cipollone, Eric Hirschman, Derek Lyons all thought he'd lost. Was that in the December 18th meeting? Yes. What, what was um, President Trump's reaction when, I guess, this cadre of advisors would say you lost? It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go, see, this is what I deal with all the time. I mean, Tim, hey, even in her, she seems to be trying to be flip. She's proving that, quote, all the time, Trump was confronted with the reality that he'd lost the 2020 election. Right, by his own lawyers, by Pat Cipollone, his White House counsel, Eric Hirschman, who's a lawyer in the White House, Derek Lyons, who's a staff secretary, but also a lawyer. These are people, Nicole, that were his lieutenants, trusted by his side throughout. And they are repeatedly telling him the truth. You lost. He nonetheless continues to publicly spout these ridiculous theories of election fraud, which no one believed. Uh, in an attempt to politically, again, the, the game here is a political solution, not a legal one, to stay in power. Very relevant, very important information. We didn't get it because all of those witnesses asserted a Fifth Amendment privilege or an attorney-client privilege. Wouldn't We couldn't compel them. We didn't have the charging authority. We didn't have the immunity uh, stick. We, we didn't have... have uh, the ability to adjudicate privileges like a criminal grand jury has. So this is all kind of consistent with what we found, but beyond direct evidence, whereas we had circumstantial.